All right, I'm here with a Nintendo Direct predictions video. As of recording this, we just got announced a Nintendo Direct for September 23rd, 2021 at 3 p.m. Pacific, and of course, the only worthwhile time zone, 6 p.m. Eastern. So uh, I think this would be an interesting Direct, all things considered. I've said on Twitter, actually, that I didn't think we'd get one this month, um, and that's aged poorly, but you should follow my Twitter anyway. It's at Gaming. I post only the finest, most exquisite tweets. Anyway, um, yeah, I just didn't think we would get one this month. We had one in June. I know we usually get something in September, but like we had one already this year in what, February, and then we had the one in June, and then we had the one now uh, in September. So this is a pretty packed year for them. I just thought, oh, I don't know. I think maybe we'll get like a direct mini. I think we'll get the last Smash Brothers character at uh, the Game Awards, the Jeff Awards, and then we will see a direct in January. Um, with early 2022 stuff. Because we already got a, you know, a decent amount of stuff we know for early 2022. We know Pokemon Legends, Arceus, and everything. But no, we're getting one. So uh, I'm going to go over some things I think we could see here. First things first, it is important to note that this Direct actually was technically leaked by the American government. Um, maybe the first good thing they've ever done. Uh, they <laughs> probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... They posted an FCC filing for Nintendo uh, advertising a Nint uh, new Nintendo Switch Online controller, or just a new controller, but it has the same kind of serial code pattern as the NES and SNES uh, Nintendo Switch Online controllers. Um, I'd be interesting to see what this is. I'm going to assume it's Nintendo 64. There's been a lot of rumors, though, of Game Boy stuff, which is weird because, I mean, there's not a Game Boy controller unless they want to make one. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. I'd love to see Nintendo 64 on there specifically. I think it's time to see that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think we're going to see an upgrade to Nintendo Switch Online anyway. I think we're going to see higher tiers. I think we're going to see stuff like that. It's about time to just see something new for Nintendo Switch Online. I mean, they have just been cranking out the lamest of the lame games. It's like kind of unbelievable. I mean, you got stuff like Jelly Boy and oh, God knows what else. Um, it's time for some new stuff, and I think Nintendo 64 would be a good place to go. Um, right now, those games are very popular um, and very high-priced. I'd just be interested to see what they put on there, what they find is too valuable um, to put on there, what they find is not too valuable. I'd love to see them beef up the whole thing entirely. I remember there was a rumor, or kind of a way of thought with the Nintendo, uh, the Super Mario 3D All-Stars, is that that was being delisted because then they were going to have... N64 NSO, they were going to have GameCube NSO and Wii NSO that would have those games on there anyway. That obviously has not come to fruition yet, but that would be an interesting way of looking at it. But I'd be interested to see what they can do with Nintendo 64. Um, they're obviously very keen to team up with third parties on these things, mostly third parties that are kind of irrelevant. Um, they do a lot of stuff with uh, Hamster, I believe, and stuff like that, so like Jalic, the old Jalico games and stuff. So it, it's kind of odd there. Um, you don't see too many of the, you know, big, big name stuff with third parties, but uh, it'd be important to note third party for Nintendo 64. Not that Nintendo 64 had great third party support at the time, but now most of the I most iconic games can now be considered third party because they are owned by Microsoft. Um, so I would be interested to see if they can get any kind of you know, deal with Microsoft to get stuff, some of the rare games on there, get Banjo-Kazooie, uh, Perfect Dark. Um, I'd be interested to see if they can get anything like that on there. And I don't think they can. I, I think GoldenEye is definitely out. I don't think they can get that even. That's just too tied up with way too many licensing deals to even try to get. But it'd be interesting if they could even, even like some of the lower end, you know, not lower end quality wise, but lower end popularity wise, like Blast Core and stuff like that, and Jet, For Jet Force Gemini be interesting to see if they could get those on there but i think you know a good starting point for n64 online would be like some mario i'd love to get the old mario parties with online play but they're not going to do that because they have uh the new mario party all-stars game coming out with online play with new you know the old board so i don't think they'd want to do that um but i mean maybe mario kart 64 be on there with online play that could be fun original smash brothers uh mario 64 it'd be interesting but on the other route, they could just put Game Boy games on there and make some kind of weird controller for Game Boy games. Uh, that'd be cool, too. Not as exciting, obviously, for me, but uh, still would be interesting for them to do. But yeah, I think we're going to see a revision to NSO. My dream for NSO is that 
you know, they'd have to do more expensive tiers and that's fine, but just like Nintendo, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, you bump it up to $100 a month or something and you can say for $100 a month, you get online play plus a library of all the first party NES, SNES, N64, GameCube, um, and Wii games all on here. It's all you got to do. That'd be awesome. Um, but I just don't see them doing anything like that. Uh, but it, that would be like, you know, the dream is just to have a nice, you know, like that, almost like a Game Pass type thing where it's like, you know, you can just play all the Nintendo first party titles on here and then you can maybe get some third parties, whatever. Would be really cool. I don't see them doing that, though. <laughs> I don't see Nintendo doing anything that's not 10 years in the past when it comes to online stuff. So uh, we'll get there eventually, maybe. Um, other than that, I think... We're at a weird place with uh, Breath of the Wild sequel. They announced, you know, they showed a little bit more of it at the E3 Direct. I think this time around we're going to get a launch window and we're going to get a name. And I think the name's going to be something of, it's going to be like something of the wild. Uh, I think that's probably pretty, or maybe it'll be like Breath of something. They should call it Death of the Wild. I think that'd be a terrible name. Um, but I think we're going to get stuff about that. I think, you know, it's been long enough. It's interesting to see people being like, oh, you know, let's, they, they made, um, you know, Majora's Mask was a lot of the same assets from Ocarina of Time, and they were able to make that game in a, like less than two years, about 18 months or so. Uh, and it's interesting that they're kind of, it seemed like they were doing something like that with Breath of the Wild, and that game's now will be out, you know, five years after the original one will come out. Um, so it seems like there's going to be a lot about this game that we just don't know about. A lot of the, this game that we have no idea what's, you know, what it is. Because if this was just, you know, your quote unquote simple asset asset flip, it would have been out by now. And I know COVID has messed things up. So I think there's a lot we could see about this one. I just want to get a name. And I would love if they were like, yeah, this is going to come, I don't know, summer 2022. Or this is going to come, you know, just give us... A rough date. I know that they don't want to do that right now because then if they have to delay it, it looks bad. But if you just say 2022, uh, it's unlikely that they'll miss the whole year of 2022. But I'm, I'm excited either way. I think we're going to see something there. Um, Smash Brothers, I think that we might not see Smash Brothers. I think they want to kind of spread it out as long as possible. And I think they want to drop the last character at the Game Awards. Uh, they didn't say anything about Smash Brothers. And I think they would have in the... Uh, direct post, and maybe they've done a follow-up tweet or something. I haven't seen it because um, I'm recording this, obviously. But maybe they have done something about Smash Brothers. Maybe they have a done a follow-up post or something. I don't know. They didn't post anything about Smash Brothers. Usually, in the direct thing, they say, "Oh, featuring the next Smash Brothers character in Nintendo Switch games." So, I think they might save it for the Game Awards. I think that's a good strategy. They did Joker there. They did. Sephiroth there. It gets a lot of eyes on stuff, especially when it's rumored right now that Master Chief is a character, which I'm not sure if I believe it or not, but, um, you know, with Halo Infinite being a big game right around the time of the Game Awards coming out, it comes around, that game's coming out around the same time I think the Game Awards usually happens, so I think that maybe they want to do it there, but we'll see. Um, I don't even know who to expect anymore. I don't know if I buy Master Chief. I know the big two rumors are like Master Chief and Crash Bandicoot. I don't know if I really buy either of those. Um, but it'd be interesting. I would be interested to see where they go with it. Uh, I think it's time to let Sakurai do a new game. Um, I am a huge Kid Icarus Uprising fan, so let him either do... You know, the guy's a genius. Just let him do a new game. Um, the man directed and wrote Kid Icarus Uprising. That game's great. <laughs> Uh, just let him do something else. Free him from the shackles of Smash Brothers already. And, you know, let him do something creative. Uh, anyway, I'm thinking I want to see Mario Odyssey 2. I don't know if that's a possibility. Um, that would be a killer announcement. That would be like a mic drop type announcement. I love Mario Odyssey. I think it's like the best Mario game. At least the best 3D Mario game. And I want to see a sequel, Nintendo. Hand it over. Give us a sequel. Hashtag give us a sequel, Nintendo. Um, Bayonetta 3 is another interesting one. I'm kind of worried about Platinum. Um, things aren't looking so hot over there. That that game Babylon's Fall looks like crap. I'm going to just say it. <laughs> their game with Square Enix, which is a shame because that game, that game when they first announced it looked really cool and then they showed it recently and it looked just horrible. So I'm not sure what the deal is there, but not on board with that one. Uh, Bayonetta 3, they're, you know, Kamiya is saying that, you know, they're ready to show the game. So my thought process is it might be done. 
and they're just sitting on it and Nintendo's waiting for it. So if that's the case, I mean, they announced the game in, in 2017, so you'd think that they already had some work. So it's possible they'd worked on the game for like four years now, three or four years now, and it's now they're ready to go with it. And if that's the case, I think we'll see it at this Direct and we'll get maybe an early 2022 release date, maybe a February uh, or January. I think that would be a good spot for it or a March. That'd be a good spot for it, I think. But I think we're ready to see uh, Bayonetta 3 for sure. Um, and if we don't see it, I'm going to be worried, <laughs> kind of worried about Platinum because, I don't know, they're doing this push for self-publishing. They did the Kickstarter for Wonderful 101 on Switch and PS4, and apparently that port's not very good. Uh, it seems kind of like a low-effort type port um, to get it running from Wii U and you know, get it working from Wii U. And they took some investment money from Tencent, which is a little bit... <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm not quite sure, you know, what to think about them. They're one of my favorite developers, but I feel like they're kind of getting outpaced at what they do with their character action games. I mean, um, Namco Bandai's Scarlet Nexus just came out. And I think that that game is on par of any, like a lot of stuff that they've done, um, mechanically at least. The story in that game wasn't anything to write home about, but mechanically, I think that game's on par with anything that uh, Platinum's done. And I think that game Project Eve coming out of South Korea also could be on par with anything they've done. So I, I feel like they're kind of going to start getting outpaced unless they start showing us the goods and not, you know, Babylon's fall. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, other than that, with Bayonetta 3, I think, yeah, I'm going to be concerned if we don't see it. But uh, we'll, I want to see it. Uh, let's show us Bayonetta 3, Nintendo. Um, trying to think of what else there could be there. Xenoblade. I think we'll get something from Monolith Soft. It's been a while since they put anything out. They're a huge studio. I mean, I think they have like 250 people working. Um, they're a pretty huge studio. I know they did Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition in 2020, but that there's no way that took up the entire team. Um, I don't know if we're going to see Xenoblade 3. There was an interesting, I think the uh, orchestra that did the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 recordings uh, tweeted that, oh, we're, we just finished we're doing some work for a video game out of Japan. Um, which is kind of a boomery way to say it, but, and the only orchestra work they've ever done for a game is for Xenoblade 2. So, uh, take that word it is. There's also, what's that, you know, they're doing that, like, fantasy action game that they teased forever ago. We've never seen anything from that. I think the first time we ever saw that was, like, 2017. Um, I'd like to see that. I like Xenoblade, but maybe it's time to get a new IP out of them. I think that could be cool. Um, uh, but I think they're going to show up, um, probably not with Xenoblade Chronicles X, uh, port, but I think they're going to show up. Uh, speaking of Wii U ports, I think we're done with them. I think that they're going to move into 3DS ports. And I did a video of games I'd like to see ported to the 3DS. Um, I just think that, you know, their next Bastion, uh, I don't think there's anything left from the Wii U to port now. Maybe Xenoblade Chronicles X, but I don't think they're going to want to do that. Uh, I'd like to see, though, Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD. Um, Nintendo will probably somehow put them $60 in individually. Uh, but I'd like to see that in a pack. I would even pay 60 bucks for a double pack of that. I'd like to see those. What I'd love to see is Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, 3D, the 3DS versions of those games put into HD. Look at those games running in an emulator on YouTube. Don't download an emulator and don't download the games because I'm not going to advocate for piracy in front of an audience. Um, but look at those games running on like an emulator on YouTube or something. Um, it, they look really great. I mean, so I would love to see those games on Switch. Those were really great, really great ports um, from Grezzo. Other than that, I'm not sure on the Zelda front. I feel like we've already got everything for the 35th with the Game & Watch and all that. May, maybe one more thing, but I don't think... I think we're about done with Zelda 35th um, on that one. But I think it'd be an exciting time. Maybe they want to do... Maybe they got Grezzo working on... Uh, the Oracle games remakes, I know that those have been kind of rumored lately, um, but I'm not sure. I don't think we're going to see Metroid Prime 4 um, as much as I want to. I don't think they're going to be like, hey, we got Metroid Dread coming out in like two weeks, but hey, check out this other, get more hyped for this more, you know, expansive looking Metroid game. You know, this the Metroid Prime 4, what, it's unproven of whether it'll be a better game. I'm more into the Prime um, games anyway, so it might be better to me, but... Um, to a lot of people, to the to the layperson, they're going to see that and they're going to go, oh, we're getting this 2D Metroid, um, but there's going to be this big 3D, you know, high budget Metroid game. Um, and that's not to put Metroid down. I just know a lot of people, there's like an argument if it's worth $60 because it's 2D, it's a stupid argument. But 
So I don't think we're going to see Metroid Prime 4. I think we're probably getting close to seeing it, though. I know they rebooted development January of 2019. Um, so it's hard to say, but I think probably sometime in 2022 we will see um, Metroid Prime 4. And I'm very excited to see that game. But I don't, I mean, I think this could be an exciting Nintendo Direct. I think this is my prediction. This is a weird one. I've said this one before a little bit, but in 2015, Shigeru Miyamoto made the statement that Pikmin 4 is almost done. It has been six years now. Where is Pikmin 4, Shigeru? Where is he? Where is he? Where is it? Where is Pikmin 4? Um, my thought process is we all know that Nintendo has never shied away from holding games for the right part of the calendar. Um, they're apparently doing that now with Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread has apparently been done for a good while now. Um, but they have never been shy of that. I'm thinking that they could have finished Pikmin 4 like a long time ago and they thought, we want the sales of Pikmin 3 Deluxe. It would make no sense to put out Pikmin 4 and then put out Pikmin 3 Deluxe on the Switch. So they probably, I think that this is a little bit tinfoil hat. I don't, who knows what Miyamoto was talking about there. Um, it could have been as simple as, I don't think they were talking about Hey Pikmin because he had nothing to do with that game. I mean, I don't know what he could have been talking about there. He has to have been talking about Pikmin 4. So unless the game was scrapped or canned, which it could have been, um, I'm thinking that we could see it. I think we could see something there. And that's kind of exciting. Uh, I really like Pikmin 3, and I'm I'm ready for a Pikmin 4. Uh, it's been about a year. I think last October is when Pikmin 3 Deluxe came out. It's been about a year now since we got um, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. I don't know. I just lost my train of thought there. And I wouldn't be surprised if they've been sitting on a Pikmin 4, like just a finished Pikmin 4 since God knows when, 2017, 2018, and they just wanted a good time for those Pikmin 3 Deluxe sales because Pikmin 3 Deluxe sold really well. I think it's the best-selling Pikmin game now. So it was smart of them to do that. Um, and it's time for Pikmin 4. It's time. Uh, other than that, with third-party stuff, it's always up in the air. I don't know what to think. I'm an, obviously a huge Atlas fan. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot of Shin Megami Tensei 5, which is cool. They're really promoting that game pretty huge, and that's great. Maybe we'll see Shin Megami Tensei 5 or a Shin Megami Tensei game character from Smash Brothers. I don't think people will be happy. Um... But other than that, I really want to see the Persona 4 Golden port to console. Um, maybe they announce it here and it comes to PS4 and Switch and whatever. Probably not Xbox because Atlas is weird. But I don't think we're going to do it. They have this weird thing going on for the 25th anniversary of Persona where they're doing announcements. Um, they're hyping up the September announcement forever. And then the announcement was that um, the animes are going to be running on TV and on different streaming services and that there's gonna be a concert in November and more announcements in December. So obviously they're not, they, maybe at the end of this announcement thing that we'll have, we'll see probably Persona 6 way at the end of next year for their announcements. But I'm thinking this would be a really good time to get Persona 4 Golden on consoles. They did the, P the PC port. It sold a rid ridiculous amount. Uh, it sold very well. And that's not even a platform that really has our JRPG fans on it. That's not really a platform that has um, any kind of real resonance with Persona. They've never had those games before. So if it can sell that well there, I'm thinking like a PS4 Switch port would sell very well. And I don't know. I love the Vita, but the Vita's time has long since ended. And I think that we're going to <laughs> uh, see the game come soon. I just don't know how, how they want to announce it. Um, but... Other Persona 5 for Switch, maybe, I don't know. I have no idea. It's such a weird thing. I can't believe they haven't done it already, but it's such a weird thing. I'd like for the, I mean, obviously I don't really care. I've played vanilla Persona 5 three times in Royal one time, so I've played the game a lot. <laughs> I don't really need to play it again on Switch, but I uh, would happy be happy for the fans who have not yet played it and want to play it on Switch. And I don't see how there's any reason it couldn't run on the Switch. Um, but other third-party stuff, uh, I think maybe we'll see. I keep saying for years, I've been saying for years, Grand Theft Auto V. 
I surprised it hasn't happened. I'm gonna guess it hasn't happened because Nintendo's online infrastructure is is penis. But um, there's a rumor gun going around about some Grand Theft Auto remasters, and I think it's possible maybe those show up. Um, I don't know if Rockstar would care to announce those games first at a Nintendo event, but um, maybe they would. Maybe they were thinking, oh, it's either this or it's a tweet because we're not going to do anything else. The, these remasters are supposedly coming um, sometime later this year, so they don't have much time to show them. So maybe that's going to happen. I don't know. Uh, the It's always weird of what, they're, what kind of third-party stuff they're going to get. There's all the cloud stuff, which I don't really care about it'd be interesting to see interested to see how they sell because like who who's buying those um but i don't know but i other third party stuff i i don't know i i can't imagine third party stuff's going to be very abundant moving forward uh the switch is essentially creating a game for the switch now is essentially creating a game for something less powerful than your average smartphone um it's pretty much a 200 dollars tablet from 2016 um, so the, the, the tech is outdated and they can do great stuff with the tech and there's some great games that run great and they can do really great stuff with the tech. But when you have the PS5 out now and even the PS4, I, you know, is, is pretty considerably more powerful. I just don't see too much going forward with this. Um, this is why I wish we would have got the Switch Pro or something like that, just because like, hey, um, get this thing up to like the power of the base Xbox One or base PS4. And I think it has a few more years in it. Look how many games are cross-gen. Um, but who knows? Moving on with that anyway, uh, other third-party stuff is just, I, I, it's, it's so up in the air. It's so random. You know, they'll pull, oh, now um, who knows? You know, some random game, maybe Yakuza games. I Maybe not uh, the ones on the Dragon Engine, but I could see like Yakuza Zero, Yakuza Kiwami um, coming to Switch. Uh, I think it's possible by all means because those were on the ps3 so i don't see why they wouldn't at least try it um another game i think would, from sega that would be good uh or from At atlas and sega obviously but is uh 13 sentinels aegis rim that game is phenomenal and um i don't think it got the recognition it deserves on ps4 and i think i mean there's nothing about it um it has a very you know nice art style uh it's like a you know 2d you know, very artistic game. That game's awesome. And I think that game would do really well on Switch. I think it would find an audience there. So I think that'd be a good one to go on there. Um, if Sega wants to keep supporting Switch, I think Soccer Wars would be another good one to put on there, the one from last year. But it's it's up in the air. It's always random. You know, you get some random game. Well, we're all of a sudden, we're going to be porting... Um, I don't know. I'm looking at my game collection. They always just port, like, the most random stuff. It's, it's like... Like, they announced not that long ago that, what's that game? Dying Light is coming to the Switch? It's like, okay. I mean, that's a six-year-old game, but okay. Um, so it's it's random. It's always up in the air. But I'm done with third-party tech now. Pokemon. What is there to say about Pokemon? They're going to show it. There's nothing to say about Pokemon, but they're going to show the remakes. They're going to show Pokemon Legends. Um, Twitter is going to get mad because they have not realized that Pokemon is a game made for small children and they are grown men and it doesn't it doesn't cater to them anymore moving on um i think that this is going to be exciting overall i think uh there's a, a lot of developers who've not gone yet you know quote unquote gone yet or gone for a while um we have not seen anything since 20 early 2019 from good feel um maybe they could be working on a new platformer i know there's rumors of a kirby 3d game and uh, Hal has not put out anything in a while, I think since Star Allies, which was three years ago. Um, there's been a lot of rumors of a new Donkey Kong game. I'd love that. My dream right here, this might be controversial. Retro Studios is working on Metroid. They're not gonna be working on Donkey Kong game. Platonic Games, they made the first ukulele game, which was, you know, a little bit too ambitious for its budget, but it's a all right game. They made ukulele in the Impossible Lair, which is like, a third game in the Donkey Kong Country Returns series. That game's a really good 2D platform. I recognize, I'd recommend it to anyone who wants to try it out. It's really good. My dream, Nintendo's been known recently for teaming up with outside developers and outside even publishers to get someone else working on their IP because they just don't have very many studios. My dream, I think they ought to do Platonic 
uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns third game. I think they can do it. I think they're capable. Uh, Playtonic is a studio of a ton of uh, former Rareware guys. It's a studio to look out for. And if they were able to do that on their own budget, you know, the budget they made from... The first game was a Kickstarter game. The budget that they made from moving on. If they were able to do that, imagine them with a Nintendo budget. I think it could be very, very good because Impossible Layer was a very good game. So that's what I'd like to see out of Donkey Kong Country. Um, it's just been so long. It's it's so crazy that there's not been one in, you know, seven years, like a brand new Donkey Kong game. Uh, a lot of cool stuff. Oh, third party. I forgot. There's been a, they leaked a Resident Evil game that's exclusive to Switch in the big Capcom leak. Uh, and it said it'd be announced in September. I think it's called Resident Evil something. I don't know. Outbreak? Not Outbreak, because that's already a game. Uh, there is a Switch exclusive Resident Evil apparently coming, for, and um, I expect fully to see that tomorrow. Um, so that could be exciting. I like Resident Evil. They've been a, a huge role lately. But I think that's all I have for announce or for, you know, not announcements, for for uh, speculation here. I think this could be a good direct. I kind of was not expecting one to happen. Oh, I'm stupid. Splatoon 3, we'll see that. We'll see more of Splatoon 3 for sure. Um, and my hopes for that game is that the the, the online play is, is very good. Um, Splatoon 2 was a good game, but it was just marred by the online being crap. And I just, I mean, every time I play that game, there's always a disconnect. Um, you'd, you'd have one team that always had three players. So whoever, it was there was always a disadvantage. It was just such a fun game. Splatoon is such a fun game, but the online really brings it down. And Nintendo has a new, like, you know, Nintendo has new online servers. They have, you know, <laughs> their original servers were from 2003. They're probably working on ones from 2008 now, but at least that's, you know, Halo 3 level servers. Um, just good online, you know, not this weird, you know, you need t time and place to play this mode. Um, cause some of the ranked modes I like a lot and some of them I don't. And it feels like every time I would get on, it would be the one ranked mode I don't like. I'm like, come on. Um, Splatoon 3, good online, please make it easier to be able to play with your friends. Um, that's what I want to see out of Splatoon 3. Don't, I mean, I'll play the story mode. The story modes have always been fun. I don't care about the story, what the story is. I don't care about the lore. I just want it to be fun. So give it to me. I think we'll get a date for that. I feel like that could be a good, like, April game, May game. Um, but, yeah, hand over Splatoon 3, Nintendo. All right, I think I'm finally done now, unless I think of something in the next five seconds. But I don't think I will. So, could be an interesting direct all around. I, once again, I didn't think we'd get one. So, the fact that they have a 40-minute Nintendo Direct coming at us um, in a time where I just think we already have a lot of games coming out is a very good sign. Um, so, that could be... This could be a good show, I think. Uh, I think it's a very good sign. So um, let me know down in the comments what you think might be happening. I'm going to try to stream my um, going to try to stream my reactions to this. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and you'll see that. Uh, I might have my friend on as well, um, who did the uh, Sky 85, who did the reaction to the last Nintendo Direct with me, as well as the Sony, um, you know, presentation for September. So I'm going to try to stream that as well. So check that out, and. Other than that, you know, follow me on Twitter at Objo Gaming. I'll tweet out more about this as it comes about. Um, subscribe as you're not already subscribed. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Helps out the channel a lot. Comment helps out the channel a lot. And I also just want to see what you guys think about what we're going to see tomorrow. Um, until next time, thank you for watching.